Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hina with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. And today, no, it's never too early to talk about your first Lego League innovative project. Here's why. Number one, it's not as fun as the robot game to most students. It takes a lot of research, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of digging. Eh, you get it? Digging this year? Never mind. So today what I want to do is go over some of the basics about your innovative project. I'm, I wrote down some notes, so if I look down at my notes, don't, you know, don't, don't freak out. I just want to go over what your team will be thinking about and talking about very soon because you, it takes a while to put a lot of this information together. And like I said, most students don't like this part and that's why you have to start early. So that way you're not rushing, you know, to get things done last second. Hopefully your team can sit back and go, ah, we got it all done with the robot game and with core values and hopefully you're not stressing out. So this year's unearthed uh, theme here is what you're looking for for your innovative project. The innovative project question involves identifying a real world problem faced by archeologists, researching existing solutions and developing an innovative, improved or new solution. Teams must also create some type of prototype, share their findings and use feedback to refine their solution. That is one thing that a lot of teams sometimes forget is taking the feedback that they get from their idea. And that's where the experts come in. So it would be wise to maybe contact an archeologist or somebody that in the archeology span field. So that way you've got that connection so that when you have your solution, you can run it by that expert and they can give you feedback on your solution and say, hey, you know, this is a great idea, but, you know, can it do this? Uh, what about the cost? And so that expert is super important to be able to take your guys' solution and, you know, kind of break it down and go, this is fine, fix this, this is fine, fix that. So that way you can tell the judges, hey, we did get some expert feedback. We modified our, you know, our project according to their feedback that'll score you a lot of points. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. When you're um, talking about this problem that archeologists face, it's real easy to sit back and go, oh man, but you see if they're experts already, then wouldn't a solution have already come about? Don't get into that train of thought. What you're trying to do is think, okay, maybe they just you know, never thought of this and maybe it's just a tiny solution. You know, it doesn't have to be this groundbreaking, wow, you guys like changed the face of archaeology forever. Don't think it needs to be earth shattering. It can just be something that helps them in maybe a small way. But, you know, if, uh, you know, so many archaeologists do this, then it can, you know, can be a big thing. So be careful not to over analyze it and go, man, we're just, we're just not going to be able to do this because we're not that smart. It's, it doesn't have to take necessarily, you know, a, this great idea. It can be, again, something small. So here we go. Um, what can be a real world problem that archeologists face? I'm gonna give you some outline ideas, but I'm not gonna give you any specific ideas. These are, you know, kind of an outline. So here we go. Um, preservation of artifacts. Ancient objects can decay quickly once exposed to air, sunlight, or moisture. So, you know, as um, these artifacts are under the ground, you know, they have certain protection. But as soon as you start digging, you know, there's a possibility they can be exposed to the elements and then decay. Um, there's also looting and illegal excavation. This is where, you know, we have some issues with treasure hunters Sometimes they'll steal artifacts, destroy important historical sites. So that can be a problem when you're, you're dealing with, you know, these artifacts. Some people realize, hey, this can be valuable and they can come and actually mess these things up. Um, funding and resources. 
excavation and research are expensive and archaeologists often struggle to get enough support. Um, I'll let you guys figure that one out. Uh, number four, weather and environment. Harsh conditions like desert heat, rain, or flooding can make sites hard to explore. Um, limited technology. Even with modern tools, it's difficult to fully analyze some artifacts or buried structures. Okay. And then we have one that I think is really, really tough. And you have to just be very careful with this one. Cultural sensitivity. Archaeologists must respect the traditions and beliefs of people connected to the site. Maybe you're going to be highly offending these people, you know, that believe you shouldn't be excavating this site. So this has a moral issue where, you know, you can be thinking one way, hey, we have to get all of these artifacts. And you don't really think how that can affect the people that these artifacts belong to or their ancestors. And then the last one would be time pressure. Construction projects or erosion can destroy sites before they can be studied properly. And, you know, that can involve many things. Um, that can involve war. That can involve just so many things where these artifacts that you know, want to be uncovered, studied. Um, sometimes they go through this issue where these sites get destroyed and they're we're under a, a time crunch to get these things um, dug out, found out, preserved. But then we have the elements, uh, you know, other than the weather, elements that we can't control. Like if there is a war zone, you know, we're not going to go in and start digging or, you know, trying to find these artifacts. And so you can take a look at all these issues and come up with one solution. And I've told you guys this a million times before. Don't get too broad of a solution. Try to get your population. Okay, so we have the whole population of archaeologists. But we don't want to necessarily overwhelm yourselves with that big of a population. Maybe we break it down by country. Maybe we break it down by archaeologists that are looking for what particular item. Maybe we stick with a certain item. And what you want to do is slowly bring it in where your, your focus is razor sharp. We are going to be presenting a solution to help these particular archaeologists with this particular artifact that will help in this specific area. Um, that's going to help your team um, focus because the broader you get, the more broad your solution is going to have to be. Where you don't want to do that. You don't want to have this huge, giant, broad solution where the judges can say, hey, what about this? What about this? And then you're stuck going, we didn't really think about that because it was so big. And that's going to just involve more time to research that particular thing. So just like anything, you know, when you do a Google search, you're going to get better results when you narrow your search topic down, razor focus it so that you're not getting millions of different results, you know, where you're like, well, what do we do? How, which one do we pick? Try to narrow it down as best you can. So, Mr. Gino, what should we do, be doing at this point? And I know it's early in the season. I would start to definitely check out and I'll leave you the link in the description to the first Lego league. They actually have videos where you can watch and see if you might be able to get some ideas to help archeologists. They have numerous uh, websites or not websites, but YouTube videos where you can actually look and see, Ooh, you know, we, we possibly can get an idea from this. Um, again, contact, a local archaeologist. You might live near a college where somebody might be in charge of archaeology. Just throw that, throw down an email to that person and just say, "Hey, this is our, you know, this is what this is what we're trying to do with First Lego League. We're just reaching out to see if you have any possible ideas for us to help develop a solution for." So don't don't put yourself in a box where you're like, "Well, I don't want to talk to anybody, and I'll just." sit here at home and try to look up things on the internet, reach out to people and see if they might 
you know, have a bigger picture than your, you know, your mind might be thinking about. Um, start to ask your team which part of the archaeology, you know, journey, you know, makes us the most interested. You know, is it the tools? Is it, you know, technology? How do they actually uh, research the site? Um, you know, a certain country your team might love. So you're, you're starting to pick your focuses, find out what your team likes, and then just stick with that. Um, you know, it's hard to say because sometimes you end up picking something and then your research takes you off and you're like, what in the world did we do? And that's when you do have to pull the parachute and go, well, you know what, let's back it up and try something else. Uh, but at, at the beginning, try to narrow it down to a solution, uh, do your research, and then just be mindful of, of your facts, be mindful of the time. Um, because again, I told you this thing is going to take a long time to research, um, reach out to people to you know, share your idea with. They give you feedback, then you retweak your, your project ideas, um, get that prototype. Um, and definitely, you know, involve everybody because I've told you guys before, when the judges are asking your team about this project, you know, they might ask you things and everybody needs to know the information so everybody can help. If you guys forgot the cost, somebody comes in and goes, it costs us this much to make, you know, our solution. Um, where did you get this idea from? Everybody shouldn't have that knowledge. So everybody can be involved. And that's where you're going to score core value points when they can go, man, everybody was involved. Everybody knew the information. And it's just going to make your score that much better. Okay, guys. So I know it's a lot to absorb. And that's why we want to hit this early to be able to not freak out, you know, a week before your uh, competition begins. So I would already start to, number one, Pick a part of the archaeology journey that your team is interested in. Man, we all love the tools that they use to, you know, uh, excavate a site. Second thing would be to sharpen your focus in. What particular tool? What particular part of the archaeology process is this tool? You know, what is it helpful for? Reach out to an expert. Hey, we want to research this tool. Can you help us with what are some problems you face with this tool? And that's when you're going to gather a lot of steam and you're like, yeah, we're getting so much information. And that's when you help, you know, develop your solution. And then the ball keeps rolling from there. So, hey, guys, if you have any uh, questions, throw it down in the comments section. I'd love to answer them. And trust me, I'm on the same journey with you guys um, as far as when my team is ready, we're going to hit those same questions and hopefully, you know, just be able to have a really successful time with this innovative project. OK. All right, guys. I am Mr. Hino from Mission's Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.